Okay, this is a good one. This is something people need to learn. It's applicable to far more than photography. It's called uh, guru worship. I used to meet uh, some professional, you know, some of the best in the world back in the day in photography school. And uh, we went out shooting with some of them. And, you know, they were the best. Their work was the best and everybody loved them. And that's all well and fine. But you know what? That doesn't mean that doesn't mean they know everything about what the hell it is that they're involved in. Same thing with a race car driver. Most race car drivers, some of the most professional ones, and I don't watch race car driving. Hell no. Um, have no idea what the hell is going on underneath the hood. You know, they sit behind that damn wheel and they are best at doing that. So... Anyway, I saw some uh, knuckleheads, some, uh, some knuckle draggers on uh, some photography forums. They were trying to prove a point by quoting another, well, not a famous photographer, but a well-known photographer. Very well-known. And, uh, love groove. Uh, <laughs> and this, is, this is nothing personal. You know, because just because someone is uh, uh, a relatively famous, well, their, their artwork is beautiful, you know, they're, you're famous, and that doesn't mean they know what the hell's going on inside of a camera. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, let me quote this uh, famous photographer. So, the point is, is that it's a fallacy to say, well, like, someone's a professional race car driver. If they comment on a car, you know, since they've won, like, a bunch of awards as a hardcore race car driver, that... They can make an intelligent and accurate statement about what goes on the hell underneath the hood of the car. And those two are not connected. Well, sure they are. You know, they work with that damn car all day. That doesn't mean anything. There's a pit crew that takes care of all that uh, that crap. You know, they just drive the car. The same thing was true of photography. Anyway, talk about the Godox system. And this is not an attack on Godox. Because most people don't know what the hell the difference is between a leaf shutter and a focal plane shutter. Now a focal plane shutter has two curtains. You know, the first curtain drops. Before the second curtain drops, the entire sensor, let me repeat that, the entire sensor at sync speed, like on Nikon, uh, excuse me, uh, Fuji X-T2 here, we have a sync speed of 1 uh, 250th of a second. So we have a 250th of a second period of time where the entire uh, sensor is exposed before the second curtain starts to drop. Above that, in any focal plane shutter, say 1,000th of a second, as the first curtain falls, depending on the interval and the uh, shutter speed, the second curtain will follow it, so uh, there's a moving slit across the sensor. This is irrefutable. Now, I want you to repeat these words after me, because this will help you understand it, because you won't forget it after this. These are special words, magic words. <clears throat> Flashing the shutter blades. Okay? Repeat that after me. Flashing the shutter blades. Repeat that again, please. Flashing the shutter blades. You know, it's interesting when you're actually dropping light, since there's a moving slit in front of the sensor, when that uh, pulse uh, from a speed light or a professional studio strobe goes off, if it's illuminating the shutter blades, then that is lost light. Yeah, because there's just only a slit, right? Above sync speed. When I go above 1 250th of a second here, 1 1,000th, 1 2,000th, 4,000th, 8,000th, I just have, let's say, 1 8,000th. So we have a narrow little slit. Whoop. Very fast, right? So anyway, let's quote a uh, famous photographer here that other people were using as authority. You see, this is called the fallacy of authority. In logical debates, there are no authorities. There are experts and novices. And just because someone is a really good photographer doesn't mean they know what the hell they're talking about when it comes to high-speed sync versus hypersync, or a focal plane shutter versus a leaf shutter. So the Godox in 8600 BM, and this is not an attack on Godox, okay? This is on any damn unit which does HSS. By the way, HSS is uh, crap lighting compared to hypersync. I've talked about this before. You can research it on the internet. Just type in hypersync versus uh, HSS. Flash heads deliver the same exposure. This is what this expert is saying. And this is the guy that does really good photography. But this doesn't mean he knows what the hell he's talking about. Delivers the same exposure in HSS mode as they do in regular sync mode. This is a lie. Remember those three magic words I told you? Flashing the shutter blades. When you're working above the sync speed of your camera, say one one thousandth of a second, the entire shutter, excuse me, the entire sensor is not exposed like on the sync speed. Say one two fiftieth of a second, one sixtieth of a second, right? In that case, the entire sensor is exposed. Above that, we have a moving slit. First curtain is dropping, and the second curtain, depending on the shutter speed, follows it closely. So, 
a lot of that light is dropping on your shutter blades. And the light that is dropping on your shutter blades sure the hell ain't dropping on your sensor. Pretty sure the sensor is somewhat important to exposure. So this person, while a famous photographer, is dead wrong. Flashhead delivers the same exposure in HSS mode as they do in regular sync mode. There must be some magic going on because the exposures, blah, 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 are identical. How cool is it? That means that there is... Here's the really good part, meaning the really incorrect part. This means that there is no benefit of shooting at normal sync speeds, no, to get the most oomph from a flash head in bright daylight, and consequently, no need to use ND filters. Means there's no benefit, this guy, this is what he says, there's no benefit at shooting normal sync speeds, as opposed to HSS. Wrong. 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 There's two reasons why. Reason number one, as I just told you, the three magic words, flashing the shutter blades. You're dropping a lot of light on the shutter blades instead of your damn sensor. That is really important. Point number two, in HSS, this is where HSS is different than hypersync. In HSS, you're not, you can't see it. It's happening so fast. But in HSS, look it up if you don't believe me. In all HSS, you're actually having pulse light. The actual capacitor is not able to charge all the way up because that takes time and power can't drain from the battery or even off the wall outlet that fast. So what's happening is it's actually pulsing the light really, really fast. And so it is a lot less power. HSS is pulsated light that is a lot less power. But in addition to that, when you're operating in C speeds above the sync speed of your damn camera, whether that's 1 1 25th of a second on the uh, Fujifilm GFX, for example, or 1 2 50th on an Icon or an X-T2, you do not have the entire sensor exposed. You have a slit exposed. And when there is only a slit exposed, regardless of what the T1 time, i.e. the flash pulse duration time of your studio strobe or speed light, instead of exposing your damn sensor, you're exposing the shutter blades. And when you're dropping your light on shutter blades rather than the sensor, this also causes a hardcore reduction in power. So this person is dead wrong. But this is a famous photographer that does beautiful photography of hot chicks, too. And this is not an attack on him. The point is, is that you can't engage in these uh, fallacies of authority. Well, this person's a famous photographer. Who are you, you fat, bald, ugly so-and-so? I'm the guy that knows what the hell's going on underneath the hood. <laughs> Yes, I do. I know what's going on. And this statement is not only, it's like, well, you know, he might be kind of, no, he's dead wrong. He's flat, dead wrong. Flat, dead wrong. <sighs> Deliver the same exposure in HSS mode as they do in regular sync. No way, no how. No, not with the Godox 8600, not with any HSS unit, period, ever. It's impossible. Because no matter whether you do HSS or hypersync, when you're working above the sync speeds of your camera, instead of the entire sensor being exposed, you have a moving slit. First curtain and the second curtain is following. So that makes this statement 100%, 1000% impossible. It means that there's no benefit of shooting at a normal sync speed to get the most oomph out of your flash head or strobe. No benefit? No. Dead wrong. Two hardcore reasons why that's dead wrong. HSS is pulsated light, which means it's a lot less powerful. And secondly, you are flashing the shutter blades when you are working at shutter speeds above your sync speed. Because when that pulse of light goes off, or the pulsations of light go off, a lot of the light is dropping on those first and second curtains. So this statement is not, in my opinion, wrong. It is 100% wrong. But he can't be wrong. He's an expert, famous photographer. Everybody makes mistakes. Don't make the mistake of thinking of someone's a famous photographer that takes pictures of hot, you know, you know. Ah, oh God, his photography is so wonderful. Yes, it is. That doesn't mean he knows what's going on. There's a lot of photographers out there. This artists are the same way too. You know, some of the best artists, you know, it's like, well, what's in that paint, Leonardo da Vinci? Of course, Leonardo da Vinci. That's a bad example because he made all his own paint, right? Other famous painters, the 16th, 17th century, they would buy their paint, their oil paints. It's like, what the hell's in that paint? I don't know. I just like it. It's pretty. <laughs> you know, you, those are just questions that are outside the scope and the realm of the expertise of the artiste. Um, 
He asked Pablo Picasso, he said, hey Pablo, uh, what uh, elemental uh, molecules and components make up that uh, dark blue oil pigment that you... I have no frigging idea. I'm an expert artiste. Do you get where I'm coming with this thing? Uh, did I make my point? Did I make it again and again? I love reading stuff like that. It's a, called an appeal to authority. It's a fallacy. There are no authorities in logical debates. Well, he can't be wrong. Really? When someone does that, they're making a really big dumb mistake. They just are. The inverse is also true. Like if you ask like a canoe maker, someone is like, Afraid of, you know, they, they don't know how to swim and they're afraid of the water, but they've been making canoes for 50 years. I remember a story about this. Some guy is an, a famous canoe maker and he steamed the wood and he hammered the wood together and his canoes were expensive and works of art, but he didn't know how to swim and he didn't, you know, use his canoes. Seems odd, but that guy has nothing intelligent to say on canoeing. That's why, well, how could that be true? He's been making canoes for 40 years. His canoes are famous. This is true, but that doesn't mean the dude knows what the hell he's doing when he's sitting in a damn canoe in the water. You see where I'm coming from? Have I had too much coffee? I might have had too much coffee, but I'm also 100% correct. Thank you so much for watching. Happy holidays. Goodbye. If you like these videos, you always click the link below. Make a small donation because I have no affiliate links. No sponsors. Killing myself answering emails and phone calls. My God, did I answer a lot of phone calls today. Huh? Or you can tell me to jump off a cliff. You can say, hey, you fat, ugly, bald, SOB, jump off a cliff. And I'll go, thank you so much. You have a nice day. Bye.